Censorship is a very broad topic and is something that exists in many forms. Wikipedia's definition for censorship reads, Censorship is the suppression of speech, public communication, or other information on the basis that such material is considered objectionable, harmful, sensitive, politically incorrect, or inconvenient as determined by government authorities or by community census. Governments and private organizations may engage in censorship. Other groups or institutions may propose and petition for censorship. When an individual such as an author or other creator engages in censorship of their own works or speech, it is referred to as self-censorship. Right now, we're living in an amazing era, one where all of mankind's knowledge is at our immediate grasp. Want to know about a historical fact, movie trivia, or just feel like watching the intro of an old TV show? Just draw your cell phone, take a few seconds typing, and you're set. It's the kind of thing that our fathers thought would never exist beyond a Star Trek episode. However, despite the ease of accessing information, censorship continues to exist to this very day. The first recorded act of censorship occurred thousands of years ago, and is something that has been well documented throughout history ever since. Because of this, many influential figures have given their takes on the subject, and today, we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 famous quotes about censorship. Let's kick things off with number 1. If all printers were determined not to print anything till they were sure it would offend nobody, there would be very little left to print. That line came from Benjamin Franklin, one of the founding fathers of the United States and a major figure during the American Enlightenment. A Renaissance man, Franklin was a renowned scientist, inventor, politician, diplomat, and author. During his lifetime, he was also the publisher of the Pennsylvania Gazette, one of the most celebrated newspapers in the United States during the 18th century. In 1730, Franklin printed a ship captain's advertisement that excluded clergymen as passengers. This caused an uproar among the local clergy, who threatened to no longer take printing jobs to Franklin, who answered by penning the now famous apology for printers from which the cited quote came from. The apology is actually a long statement about his philosophy as a printer and why he shouldn't be censored for publishing an unpopular opinion. Number 2. There is no such thing as a moral or an immoral book. Books are well written or badly written. That is all. That is a quote from the preface of The Picture of Dorian Gray, the only novel ever penned by playwright and poet Oscar Wilde. The book tells a tale of a man having a painting of himself done only to fall into despair knowing that he would grow old and ugly, while the painting would remain beautiful forever. Unbeknown to him, the young man entered a pact with the devil in which he would always stay the same while the picture would grow old and decrepit as a reflection of his sins. The picture of Dorian Gray was harshly criticized when released due to the book's depiction of hedonism and homoeroticism. Free from the chains of mortality and morality, the main character of the novel pursued hedonistic pleasures to his heart's content, something that offended the sensibilities of critics from that era. While writing the revised version of his book, Wilde decided to open it by answering to such criticism. Number 3. If we don't believe in freedom of expression for people we despise, we don't believe in it at all. That quote came from Noam Chomsky, published in 2000's The Big Little Book of Jewish Wit and Wisdom. Chomsky is an American philosopher, linguist, social critic, and political activist, among other things. His claim to fame happened during the Vietnam War when he published an essay called The Responsibility of Intellectuals in the New York Review of Books. There, he criticized the United States' involvement in the conflict. The essay was later expanded in his first political book, American Power and the New Mandarins. Chomsky remains an active and influential voice in political and social discussions to this day. Number 4. There is more than one way to burn a book, and the world is full of people running around with lit matches. This is a line from Fahrenheit 451, published in 1953. The book is one of the most well-known works of Ray Bradbury, author of many science fiction and horror stories, and also a recipient of a Pulitzer Citation in 2007. The story takes place in a dystopian future where books are banned and firemen carry the task of burning them to protect society from the supposed dangers of reading. Ironically, the book was censored, redacted, or outright banned quite a number of times, the most recent being in 2006 when the parents of a 10th grade student in Montgomery County, Texas demanded Fahrenheit 451 was removed from their daughter's English class reading list. Number 5. What is freedom of expression without the freedom to offend? It ceases to exist. That was said by Sir Ahmed Salman Rushdie, an acclaimed British Indian novelist exalted for mixing magical realism and historical fiction in his works. 
His second work, Midnight's Children, won the Booker Prize in 1981 and was considered the best novel of all winners, both in the 25th and 40th anniversary of the awards. In 1988, Rushdie published his fourth book, Satanic Verses, partly inspired by the life of the prophet Muhammad. The Muslim world reacted violently to such publication, with many accusing the author of blasphemy. In 1989, the then leader of Iran issued a fatwa, ordering Muslims to kill Rushdie, which resulted in many attempts against the life of the writer, and the British government had to put him under protection. To this day, the orders were never revoked. In fact, the Iranian state media renewed the fatwa in 2016, and in 2017, the bounty of the writer was raised to 3.3 million USD. Rushdie is still the target of threats. Number 6. If you can't say fuck, you can't say fuck the government. This is a line attributed to Lenny Bruce, a stand-up comedian who became infamous in his time thanks to his social criticism and satire. Some of the most prominent comedians in history, such as George Carlin and Richard Pryor, were inspired by Lenny's antics. On October 4, 1965, Bruce was arrested for obscenity in San Francisco on the grounds of using profanity when on stage at the jazz workshop. He was acquitted by the jury at the time, but the incident caused his appearances to start being monitored by government agencies. As a result, Bruce was arrested several other times during his career. Number 7. The only valid censorship of ideas is the right of people not to listen. Those were the words of Tom Smothers, a comedian and musician mostly recognized for the duo that he formed with his younger brother Dick. During the 1960s, Tom and Dick starred on the Smother Brothers show, a sitcom aired by CBS. Over the show's run, the brothers fought with executives and censors over creative control and managed to sneak many references to sex, drugs, and other controversial topics into the show. Their political and social beliefs led to the show's cancellation. After that, Tom became an outspoken defender of freedom of speech and the First Amendment of the American Constitution. Number 8. The Dirtiest Book of All is the Expurgated Book this inflammatory statement came from poet and journalist Walt Whitman in response to the harsh criticism directed at his poetry collection, Leaves of Grass. The book was highly controversial for the time thanks to Whitman's use of sexual imagery. Because of it, the author was fired from his job at the Department of Interior and was even advised to commit suicide by the Saturday press. Even though he faced almost universal rejection, Whitman repudiated any form of censorship against his book, which led to him losing his first publishing deal. Leaves of Grass had many iterations, the last one of them nicknamed the Deathbed Edition, published in January 1892, only two months before the author's death. Number 9. I believe in censorship. I made a fortune out of it. Words meant to be tremendously ironic directly from the mouth of Mae West, one of the biggest names in Hollywood during the golden years of cinema. West worked in over a dozen movies and took part in many Broadway plays. She was one of the most prolific actresses in Hollywood during the height of her career. The success of her 1933 movie, She Done Him Wrong, single-handedly saved Paramount from bankruptcy. She was also a provocateur and possessed a very spicy sense of humor, which caused her many problems with the censors of the Motion Picture Production Code at the time. West would purposefully add over-the-top lines to her scripts in hopes that censors would cut them and leave the original content alone. Also, in 1937, West got in hot water after making very risque jokes during two radio sketches. Those events almost caused her permanent banning from the medium. Number 10. How anybody expects a man to stay in business with every two-bit wowser in the country claiming a veto over what we can say and can't say, and what we can show and we can't show. It's enough to make you throw up. The whole principle is wrong. It's like demanding that grown men live on skim milk because the baby can't eat steak. This quote is directly lifted from the book The Man Who Sold the Moon, written by Robert A. Heinlein in 1949 and published in 1951. The book tells the story of D.D. Harriman, who is obsessed with becoming the first person to travel to the moon and in the process, own it. To accomplish his goals, Harriman bamboozles a soft drink company, an anti-communist associate, and even a television network. This line from the book comes from a network executive when Harriman promises him that he can broadcast from the moon free from any type of censorship if he agrees to fund his adventure. Curiously, this sentence might be the origin behind a remark commonly misattributed to writer Mark Twain, who's quoted as saying, 
Censorship is telling a man he can't have a steak just because the baby can't chew it. While Twain, author of Huckleberry Finn, never uttered such words, he did say in one occasion that when a library expels a book of mine and leaves an unexpurgated Bible lying around where an unprotected youth can get a hold of it, the deep unconscious irony delights me and it doesn't anger me. But that's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment below and don't forget to subscribe if you're interested in learning more about censorship in games and other media. Until next time, thank you for watching.